Hello, fellow hams and YouTubers. I almost said good evening because it's evening here. It's dark outside and I'm on the low bands. I'm experimenting with a relatively new digital mode. One of the newest, actually. It was uh, developed in two, uh, 2015, not very long ago. Um, it's called FSQ. And that stands for Fast Simple QSO. Now, the idea behind FSQ is, well, it's, it's kind of a chat mode. You could think of uh, instant messenger apps, like uh, AOL Instant Messenger, or uh, Internet Relay Chat, or texting on a cell phone. The way that those uh, exchanges work is you type a line and you hit enter, and it sends the line. And the person you're chatting with types a line and hits enter, and the line gets sent back to you. Um, it's set up to work in exchanges like that, one line at a time. Uh, as soon as you hit enter, it sends your line of text to your designated station. So it's really kind of a, a chat uh, mode. Simple, right? Well, fast, simple, QSO. Okay. It was developed by Khan Wasilif, ZL2AFP, and uh, Murray Greenman, ZL1BPU, in 2015. Now, it's a multi-frequency shift keyed mode, meaning it uses multiple tones and shifts between them. Uh, it actually has 33 tones and a total bandwidth of uh, about 300 hertz. Now, the encoding that they use is called IFK+, and it's, um, I've started to read the technical side of it, and I'm not going to go into it here. You could read about it if you really wanted to learn about it, but it's rather involved. But it does have some benefits. It's uh, touted as being drift-proof and immune to multi-path uh, propagation, so you don't get uh, problems with multipath. I know that uh, with, uh, for example, JT65, I have seen multipath uh, result in a decode happening more, more than once, so you end up with two lines from the same uh, information at different frequencies, and it's a, it's a multipath receive. Um, FSQ runs at 2 to 6 baud, which is uh, not, not bad. A line goes through pretty quick. We'll, we'll see that in a demo. And presently there are three uh, common frequencies uh, where you can find activity for FSQ. On 80 meters at uh, 3594, on 40 meters at 7104, and on 30 meters at uh, 10.144 megahertz. Now there's uh, an official program for FSQ and it's called uh, uh, FSQ Call, which can be downloaded off of the official uh, site for uh, FSQ. I'll put that down in the uh, description below. That's the Windows application. It runs fine under Wine for Linux, and I'll, I'll show you that in a moment. But FSQ is also supported by the wildly popular FL Digi uh, program, which is the multi-digital mode program that I highly recommend. Um, it does many, many digital modes. Uh, 30, 35, 40, I lost count, digital modes, but it does also do FSQ. Uh, so there's a couple of programs you can use to get into this mode. All right, we're here at the computer, and uh, we're going to get into the, uh, the software, and I'm going to give you a demo. I've got the uh, radio sitting over on 7.104, which is the FSQ frequency on 40 meters. It's kind of quiet. I'm not hearing much activity, so we might have to wait until I can get my friend in here to actually give you a, a, a real live demo, but... But we'll take this time to look at the software and the website. So let's go to the computer. Okay. This is the official website for FSQ here at uh, qsl.net, zl1bpu slash mfsk slash fsqweb.htm. I'll put that down in the description for your convenience. This gives you all the information about the software and download links for the Windows software and information about the mode, including some technical information and history. So this is a good read if you want to read about the mode. Um, there's also a wiki here at uh, cgdwiki.com slash wiki slash fsq, which also has uh, mostly redundant information, but it includes frequency lists for regions 1, 2, and 3. So you can uh, figure out which frequencies to go and look for activity. So. 
Those are the websites. There's a sample here of what it looks like in a waterfall. That's kind of nice. But we want to look at the software, don't we? So first off, we'll look at the uh, we'll look at the Windows software. Where did I put that? I closed it. Why did I close it? I don't know. There we go. So I downloaded the uh, Windows program here. Um, it's a single executable. You don't have to run setup to install it. Uh, they have a setup text file which just walks you through configuring it. But you can simply run the program. Now I am under Linux, as you can see, not Windows. So I have to use Wine to run this. But Windows applications, most of them run perfectly fine under Wine. So if I right click on that and I hit open with Wine, Windows Program Loader, it's wanting me to configure um, CAT or rig control, but I don't have that connected, so we'll just have to skip that. But here is the program. Now it's uh, receiving audio. You can see the waterfall scrolling by there. Uh, it's a pretty straightforward interface. Messages are going to appear here. You're going to type uh, I think this is the monitor window. Or this might be where you type. No, this is where you type. Okay, this this is the monitor window and where you type. Or maybe this is where you type. <laughs> I don't know the Windows application. Yeah, okay, this is where we type our messages. This is the monitor window. And this is incoming messages here. Uh, this panel up here is where call signs would appear if they are copied. Now, similar to uh, automatic link establishment, um, programs can sound. And what that means is send out a beacon with your call sign, your information, um, and just let everybody else know that you're there. If, if I sound with my call sign, other people are going to see my call sign appear in this list on the right. Now, you do have to go in here to options, and you have to set all of your information in. Um, call sign, location, sounding message, which is optional. And uh, uh, whether or not you want the sounding message to be sent... Uh, other options there, so you can read about those within the program itself. I think they're pretty self-explanatory and straightforward. So if I turn on sound, what's going to happen is uh, the radio is going to transmit. There it goes, about 20 watts. And uh, what it is sending, that's what it's sending right there. KB9, RLW, colon, and B6, which is a code that just basically means, Hi, I'm here. Um, so what, what happened now, if there's anybody out there listening... Uh, my call sign appeared over here in this right panel and they have the option of clicking on it and sending me a message or sending me uh, a file or uh, sending an image so you can send pictures with this as well um, the ability to direct a message to a specific call sign uh, is automatable so you can use this program for telemetry in fact I think that was what I was reading on the website was they uh, Part of the design for this was use as a telemetry program. So this is the Windows program. Um, speed lets you set the uh, baud rate you're running at. One interesting thing about this mode is that the baud rate is um, independent. I can set my baud rate to 4.5. Somebody else could be sent to 6, and we could still communicate. His messages would just come through faster. Um, mine would go out a little slower. So I could, I could change this, and everybody else could still copy me. You don't have to be in the same baud rate as the other stations. That's kind of cool. So that's the Windows software in a nutshell. It's, like I said, pretty straightforward. Let's go look at FL Digi. Okay, I had to stop the recording for just a moment. Um, the Windows application didn't quit nicely. It left uh, three threads running. Strangely, when I ran it, it started five copies of itself. Um, I don't know if it does that under Windows or not. It, uh, it was odd. But I sorted that out, and we're ready to, to show you FL Digi. So let's go back to the computer, and we'll take a look at FL Digi. Okay, so let's launch FL Digi. Now up here under Op Modes, you see FSQ is listed, and I'm going to go to FSQ6, which is the faster one. And the uh, waterfall is showing my rig. Now, when you're in FSQ mode, you'll notice this panel appears over here. Let me show you the normal, uh, the normal way you see a, a FL Digi with nothing over there. It's just decoding. If we come up here and we go to FSQ, FSQ6, this panel appears. 
Now here's where the call signs of stations that are heard are going to uh, show up. If you have SSQ not turned on, then this is a monitor window. It'll decode everything that's going on on that frequency. If I turn this on, it's going to start filtering. And it's only going to show, um, show me messages that are directed to me. And it'll show the call signs of everybody at monitors over here, where you can select them and then send them a message. You can also, from this list, right-click on a call sign and send a file or send an image to that call, or do an all call, which is everybody receives it. Um, this monitor button opens a monitor window, which shows your settings, and then will show a decode of everything that's coming in and everything that's going out. So I sometimes leave that open just to see what traffic is going on on the frequency uh, what other people are saying before they're even, or well, when they're not talking to me. But that's that monitor window. Now, uh, if I hit the transmit receive button, that is the same as sounding. Uh, when I click that, it's going to send out my call sign, the colon, and the B6 backspace. Okay, so um, I just sounded. So anybody else on the frequency that heard me now sees my call sign in this sidebar over here and they are uh, able to send me a message if they want. So uh, we want to give you a live demo, and uh, my friend Jim, AC9EZ, is presently setting up the Windows application on his uh, computer across town, and uh, within about five or six minutes, he's going to be ready to go, and we'll connect on the computer, and I will show you how FSQ looks in operation. Well, Jim showed up. So let's go back to the computer and I'll show you how FSQ works. Okay, so we got FL Digi running. And uh, there's Jim. We uh, just heard him a little while ago showing up over here. He sounded, so he showed up here. So if I want to send Jim a message, I double click on his call and it inserts his call here. And then I put my message in. Hello, Jim. How goes it? Now, as soon as I hit enter, it's going to go into transmit mode and it's going to send this message. And the radio just went into transmit. And the message is going across as you can see in the transmit window up here. Now I'm going to open the monitor window so we can see the raw traffic going on. And you can see there my call, B6, his call, and then the message. And then BS is the end of transmission tag. Now, suppose, uh, assume, I would assume that he is now sending me a message, typing it out, and in a moment he should transmit. He must be typing a long message. We'll send him another one. There goes my transmission. The radio is putting out about uh, eight, nine watts. He's just across town. There's his response. And then his message appears up here. I normally would have this monitor window closed and the message would just appear when he uh, when he sent it, so. I'm going to send him a little text file. Now if I had the monitor window off, we would just rely on this and you'd see my transmissions are in red, his messages back to me are in blue. So this would not be a mode for somebody who's not a good typist. <laughs> roger, roger, go ahead and send it. Now, to send a file, I will simply right-click on his call sign, send file to. It asks me for the file, 
and I created this little text file here. So I'll select that. My radio just wanted to transmit. And you can see that it defines it as a text file, and then it sends the text. And then on his end, he would save that out under that file name. Up, oh, and that acknowledgement was automatically sent. So his program was saying, acknowledged, we got the file okay. The other thing that uh, FLQ can, or FSQ can do is it can send an image file. So uh, let's see if uh, Jim can send me a picture. How about a picture, Jim? Got anything you can send? I'm going to close the monitor window. This is how you would normally use the program without monitoring everything that's going on across the network. You would just see the messages that are sent to you and the messages you sent out. The uh, QSL will send you a pic of a small rabbit. Okay? There we go. I was reading about the software and they talk about the method that they use to send the picture. They use a frequency modulation method here, lower frequencies being black, upper frequencies being white. So it's very similar to the regular slow scan television where it's sending a line at a time and each one is uh, the tone pitch is changing pixel by pixel. So we can see our image of the rabbit is appearing here. Now it even kind of sounds like slow scan television. There are three image modes. Uh, there's a high resolution black and white mode, which is like a facsimile or fax mode. There is a medium resolution or high resolution color mode and then a low resolution color mode. I think this is what they call the high resolution color mode. I don't know if you can hear the radio or not. You should be able to hear that. That's what the image transmission sounds like. And uh, when we send the next batch of text back and forth, I'll turn it up so you can hear the, uh, the frequency shift keyed sounds of the um, FSQ transmission. Okay, the picture is just about done. And it looks like a rabbit. All right. Got it. A little white bunny. Now I'm sending him that message. AC9EZ, got it.
Now I'll turn the radio up again so you can hear the uh, tones of his transmission as soon as he sends. Oh, there he is. Hear that? I think this one's a cousin of the Easter Bunny. <laughs> so, as I said, it's, it's a little chat uh, mode. Kind of like AOL Instant Messenger or uh, Internet Relay Chat or uh, texting on a cell phone. So that's FSQ. Well, thanks for watching. I hope that this has been helpful and informative. And uh, if you get a chance to get out there and play with FSQ, maybe we'll run into you there on the bands. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Also, if you're not already a subscriber, click to subscribe. Join us on the Facebook channel for discussion about the videos. And if you'd like to help support this channel, please click to support me on my Patreon page.